Hey guys, welcome to episode four of the Refuse to Lose podcast. My guest for today's episode is Liam Knight from the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Now Liam has a very unique story. After losing his mum to cancer at a very young age, he bounced all around the country as a child and a strained relationship with his father has even left him homeless at times throughout his life. It's led to a number of behavioural issues that have littered Liam's NRL career. The most notable one was when he was convicted for high-range drink driving in 2016. The incident became infamous because after Liam was arrested, he sprayed mosquito spray into his mouth in what was a drunken attempt to beat the breathalyzer. In this podcast, Liam talks about the difficulties of his childhood, his departures from both Manly and the Roosters, as well as addressing that drink-driving incident in detail. There is also a much lighter side to Liam. He is one of the great characters in the NRL and a great entertainer. And through this podcast, he takes us through a lot of other stuff, including his junior tennis career and even fires back at a few sledges from Tom Trebojevic from our last podcast. So please enjoy my chat with Liam Knight. Liam Knight, welcome to the Refuse to Lose podcast, brother. Uh, thanks for having me, mate. What's happening? Oh, not much, mate. We're uh, here at your place. You share with um, Toby, Toby from the Sharks. Yeah, big yeah. Toby Rudolph. Yeah, he's a an interesting guy. You guys are probably you got to be the the rarest household in the NRL, don't you? That has to be the nicest way of uh, describing who Toby is. I think um, he's an interesting character. Yeah. <laughs> You guys, are, people have seen your, your TikToks and stuff like that. It's probably a glimpse of how weird things get here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's peak weirdness when we actually choreograph as weird as we can be. Um, it's been a lot of fun, to be honest. I probably couldn't imagine being locked up with too many other people. You know, people probably th- say it'd be a bit of a punish, but every day is a new day. It's a new, it's a new Toby. So it's been a lot of fun. I was gonna say you need, but you need someone to kind of bounce off, eh? Because you're, you're a bit. Of- yeah, you're yeah. a bit loose. <laughs> Sound a bit crook as well. So we've had a lot of fun <laughs> bouncing ideas off, and then just going and do random things. So yeah, we've always been on the go, and it's been good to obviously train with another player um, that can. We're allowed to, you know, be in all those rules that the NRL have handed out. So um, that's been handy as well. Is that common to guys live with guys from other teams often? Uh, I don't know. Um, no, maybe not. Not as common as you think, but I think it wouldn't be completely uncommon. I'm not sure. Like does it, does it, it works, but it's all right. Yeah, it was we. I was pretty hectic. Like, um, see, I never done. It. I've never really like lived with anyone else from another team before. But and it all sunk in when we played each other round one. So obviously, like, I, I come home sort of trying not trying to talk footy, just talking training to like the, the missus and that. And then I realised that Toby's there, so it was a bit weird. Yeah, like, oh, I might just stop talking a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is weird. Yeah, eh? so, yeah it was, that it, was a strange thing. After that, I was smooth sailing. And as long as, long as we're not playing each other, it's um, it's sweet. Yeah, like, do you, do you talk a bit of shit to each other, mate? Like oh, yeah, that? yeah. I was, I, was thinking, I was like, you know, man, I'm happy for you. But I remember before he left, um, before round one, I was just like, before, when he was leaving the door, I was like, good luck, but I'll make sure if you make a mis- don't make a mistake because you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Like, <laughs> it was just that boot, wasn't it? Yeah, that boot, wasn't it? That kind of stuff. Just, just before he left the door, he wasn't happy with me, but um, he had a good game, so good on him. Right, yeah, so there's a bit of sledging because I know guys love to sledge each other, but uh, we had... Um, Tommy Turbo and Jakey Trebojevic on the last podcast and, mate, they, they gave it to you. Tom said, I think I've got it written down here, he said, Liam Knight thinks he's the greatest person to ever walk this earth. <laughs> That's a fair rap. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't taken anything with a grain of salt that Tom said since he was about 17 when he actually used to be a bit humble, but... Ever since then, you know, the fame's got to his head. He's playing for his country and his state, which is good on him. I'm very happy for him. But, yeah, like I said, um, yeah, don't take too much what, what Tom says anymore. So, yeah, Did Jake say anything about me? I care what Jake says. No, Jake, Jake, no, he was all right. You know what Jake's like. Yeah, yeah I know Jake. Say, Jake's a good bloke, obviously. He doesn't say anything mean about anyone, Jake. Yeah, but it's funny how that one, one sort of stayed, you know, you know, stayed solid and a good bloke and the other one sort of dropped off and came a bit arrogant and leery. But that's like money changes people. It's okay. <laughs> is that the case? Because you've known him for a long time. He's, he, you know, they, and they've got this reputation have been the best blokes in the NRL, but Tom, not so much here. No, no, he's still like, – Jake, Jake definitely um, brings up the average of like a good bloke in the, in the household. But uh, no, Tom's a good bloke. And uh, when he's asleep, he's my favourite, but he's probably the best version of Tom is when he's asleep and you don't have to hear his voice. But he is a good bloke, yeah. And they were talking you up saying you're a, um, you know, a forward who thinks he's a halfback and we were talking about the good old classic Oz tag days where we used to play together. 
and yeah. you're a special for a, 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 tr- a chip chase for yourself or a grubber for yourself. Yeah, plenty of kicks for myself. Don't think too many come off, but I um, definitely didn't 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 really wear me at all. I, I keep giving them a crack till they try, and then when they come off, I'm you know fingering the air, carrying on a bit. One out of a hundred, but it was a lot of fun the old Oz tag days. Oh yeah, <laughs> big Dookie running around, oh, mate. Yeah, I'm, I've still got it, mate. I'm still playing <laughs> in, his 30, like, yeah. in his thirty second stints. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Lucky we didn't have an interchange rule, mate. He would have blown out a whole budget. <laughs> Just short, sharp burst, mate. That's all you need. Oh, you're good for you're good for one or two runs. Mate, yeah, as opposed to as Tom said to me that you, he goes, you, Liam never subbed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How am I supposed to do my chip and chases if I'm on the bench? Can't yeah. do it. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> never subbed. Yeah, mate. Never. You um. Oh, I, I got subbed actually when I got Simeon a couple of times. Yeah. Andrew yeah, back mate. at the ref because we were talking about um. I was the Achilles heel talking to the refs, and you were you're the master sledger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot of fun, mate. Do you do you sledge on the field? Now? Um, not really. I don't know. Like, if it is, it's more like people I'm, I sort of know. I'm mates who are mucking around, sort of in there. I'm not really trying to um trying to get at anyone in particular. That's not really me. Mate. I'm sort of you know trying to keep me breath in place, let alone try and spray someone. Yeah, give it time. Yeah, exactly. Maybe over the years I'll, I'll develop some. I need, I need to be funny, you know. If it's not funny, there's no point in saying it. So when I get funny, I might start saying some stuff. Oh, we'll be waiting a while then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the other thing that stood out to me, uh, obviously we played different sports over the years, knowing each other for a fair while, but uh, you as a as a tennis player, um, yeah, I remember we went and played tennis one time and you absolutely smoked everyone. And I remember thinking, oh, how's Liam so good at tennis? And then... Someone told me that you were like some kind of tennis prodigy or something coming through. Is that that true? No, this is actually one of my favourite stories. Like um, everyone's sort of like, oh, you know, if you didn't play, if you didn't play footy, you could have went down the tennis road and and this and that. And honestly, I I did play tennis. I, I played a lot more tennis than the average person, um, but. You know, I might have been all right at a certain age. Maybe I stopped playing when I was about 16 and I played in a few tournaments. I was like, you know, maybe lucky enough to win a cup, one or two tournaments. But other than that, mate, honestly, there's been that much GST added onto all of it. It's, it's, I honestly laugh every time. And I, I want to sort of be like, yeah, no, I was a free kind of thing. And I reckon everyone <laughs> will just believe me because it's already sort of a rumor. And, but no, I was all right. I was a handy tennis player. I played a lot. I played a lot of tennis. Um, so like to the average person, I seem, um, you know, very special. But around other tennis players, I'd, you know, I'm just, I'm just a very average tennis player. Mate, that, I just think that that just surprises me. Like you played tennis, like, you, you know, you're 112 kilos or something. Obviously, you weren't. You're a bit skinnier back then. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, uh, it was, yeah, <laughs> it's, just a, it's a really funny one. It's like all those things like you hear about um, Turbo, like Tom, you know, when he played AFL, oh, he could have, it was, you know, between between AFL and rugby league, which, is, which was never the case. If you ask him, it's a pretty funny story. He played like, you know, he's played junior footy, junior AFL, then was not that good and sort of moved on to footy, but they find out he's played once or twice and, the, oh, he was, yeah, it was a definite the, choice. It was a definite We choice. in the media don't beat anything up, mate. Nah, I don't know what you're talking about. So obviously, yeah, the media's going real well there <laughs> no, but yeah, I played a bit of tennis when I was younger and that's pretty much as far as it goes and I'm but still alright did you did you like come up against anyone like did you I've, you like, you met Nick Kyrgios or something did you yeah you so that's like the, the biggest claim to fame I think I, I played a tennis tournament in Bathurst when I was about 15 and Nick Kyrgios was at the tournament so we played at the same tournament at the same time that's um that's the heights that I reached yeah but you didn't didn't play you know? <laughs> no, I never played anyone that would you know you would ever t- hear about on TV these days no. but you realise, I think you should have pursued it because when you play tennis, like, you can do whatever you want, mate. Like, yeah. uh, you can you can carry on. You can you can be an absolute tosser. Yeah, yeah, you can, exactly. you, you can You can, you know, there's a lot of rules to be an NRL player. Being a tennis player, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I did think about, you know, I probably might, might have missed the boat on that one. I might have chosen a different thing. So, I could have been in the shadows a bit more, you know. Um, not, not as much scrutiny, but... I think at the end of the day, you know, I just love footy too much and, and tennis just wasn't for me. It was just a little side thing at the time. How'd you get into tennis? Well, I um, well, I was living in Brisbane uh, and I don't know how it all worked out, but my dad sort of moved away to Western Australia and I had a choice when I was 12 um, to either go with him or move to the Central Coast with my tennis coach that I met when I was living in Alice Springs, which is another long story. But so like I just, and I had a choice and I decided to, I wanted to move in, in my tennis coach. And obviously I went to school and, and I played footy when I had training, but obviously there's a lot more time when you're younger, so you're not full-time footy or anything like that. So I was just playing tennis every day just to keep busy. And um, that's how I picked it up. See, so you, uh, it's, it's just so interesting, like, yeah, and to, because footy and tennis are so contrasting, but yeah. you mentioned 
you mentioned Alice Springs, and uh, I, I always found that interesting when I saw oh, Liam was born in Alice Springs, and I, there must be like some kind of story there. Like, how did you born in Alice Springs, and like, and you mentioned you lived in Brisbane, and I know you've lived all over the place, but like, kind of, I guess, give us a, a backstory into into Liam Knight, you know, born in Alice Springs, but then you know how your life kind of progressed from there a little bit. Yes, yeah, interesting one. So um, obviously I was born in Alice Springs. Um, I didn't really live there long at all. I think when I was two, uh, my parents, we, we all moved, me and my brother and my parents, we moved to Sydney uh, for maybe a year or two. And like, honestly, I'm not even 100% certain. Uh, it's all a bit of a blur and I might even get my own timeline wrong. I just know I live in certain places. It's like, you know, for a certain amount of time. Um, and then I think when I was about three or four, my mum got sick and we moved to Adelaide. Uh, we were more, more family based there, I think. I honestly, not really that certain. Um, we were there for a bit, and, and things got worse. My mum um, had had cancer, and it all sort of progressed. And she ended up passing away when 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 I was about five in Adelaide. And that's when we started moving around a lot more. You know, Dad was trying to find work, and um, just sort of continuously moving around. Never really found an exact home. I was in, um, you know, I was back in Sydney, Darwin, Alice Springs, Brisbane, Central Coast, my tennis coach, and then all that things were sort of happening. So I was obviously I didn't really have that home base. But yeah, that was me when I was younger. What do you remember about when you were like when you around that time your mum died? You probably you're only what five? You said five. said you, you probably won't remember much about. Nah, no real memories. Um, I sort of get caught up watching, like, oh, if I've seen like, old videos, I sort of get confused if that's a memory or not, that kind of stuff. But yeah, it happened like a long time ago, so I can't really, can't really distinguish if it was a memory or not. That's the hard thing. So you, you, your mum passed away, and you, so you're in Adelaide at that point, yeah. and you know, and then where, where did where to next? Where do you? Um, while all the um, the funeral was getting um, sorted out, my dad was getting on top of all that. We went and stayed with my mum's best friend in Sydney for a, um, honestly can't even tell you how long. A couple of months maybe. My dad sort of popped in and out after the funeral, still managing stuff there. Then we all moved to Darwin. I think that was an, a work thing for my dad, and then we, that was when we stayed there from there for a bit. How long are you in Darwin for? Are you? Uh, about four years. Four years. Yeah. Yeah. So you started like playing footy up there, or do you like? Uh, yeah, yep. Started playing footy in Darwin. Um, you know, t- going to school. Can't remember what school. That kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, f- four years in Darwin, and then um, we kept moving from there. What was your old man doing? Mate, he was in the film industry. It was like ads, and he was trying to find. He was a location manager for ads and stuff on TV. And I'm obviously not sure about what was happening back then, but it just seemed like um, just kept trying to work around and see if it all was a perfect match and um, yeah, mix and match kind of thing. Yeah, so you so you're in Darwin, and then you're probably about ten years old, yeah. and then you then you ended up you say W A or nah, from no, Darwin, no, no. Alice Springs for six months, yeah, Alice like Springs, a little six yeah. month job my dad had, and from Alice Springs to Brisbane, and I was in Brisbane for about two years. Okay, yeah, and that your dad was still working dad there. Dad was then. still working yeah. there then, and then from there that was when I started living with my tennis coach. Okay. Like how it all worked out. So you met your tennis coach yeah, like, in Alice Springs yeah. for that six month period when I was about ten. Okay, and he was real close to my dad, and they were like, like friends and that. And and my tennis coach was running. His name was Matt. Um, he was running, like uh, I can't even what you call. It. He had two people, live, two tennis kids living with him. They're like high performance tennis people. They live with him away from home. Obviously, like his tennis program and stuff. And then I had the opportunity to go there and like live in that kind of environment with these older guys that were playing tennis all the time, trying to make it there. So I saw like that's what I don't know. It was just a strange time, eh? So then you follow him to the Central Coast. Yeah. And that's why I remember we went to a wedding like last year on the Central Coast and you just suddenly like disappeared with these bunch of guys. And we're like, Where, where's Liam going? Like, and he's like, oh, he, uh, he lived here for a bit. He knows he knows these people. I was like, where didn't this bloke live and who yeah. uh, who didn't who don't he know? Like, Mate, that was all, I, I lived on the Central Coast for about three years. So I went back to that wedding, Dylan <laughs> Kelly's yeah, wedding. Yeah. I remember, honestly, I went to school with like half the people there. I hadn't seen him in five, six years. It was, it was pretty surreal. So that was pretty awesome. So what about like, I guess moving around a lot because like we've had um, Jimmy Roberts on this podcast and it, it sounds like you know he he had different circumstances but he moved around a lot as a kid and kind of never really settled into one place or you know uh, you know what's that like as a child because you know as opposed to someone who grows up in the one neighbourhood with all the kind of same friends and that but if you're bouncing around what's what's that like? Yeah, it's obviously different at the time. You're thinking and it was just the normal like I you know I'd get it, you know, two years here and I go oh, I'm moving again. It wasn't really that 
you know, a, a very different thing for me. So I, I went to different schools. I went to about 11 or 12 schools just, and I was always the new kid at the school, which was, it was obviously, um, wasn't ideal. It was, um, a bit of anxiety, you know, every, every day starting, you try and make friends every school you go to, you're always that new kid. So, um, that was always very hard at first. Um, I felt like I always had footy. So I was always, I might have made friends a bit easier than other people trying to, I was always playing footy, you know, you obviously make friends and you got teammates and you go to training, so you're seeing more kids, um, but that's what I had to sort of uh, help me out a lot when I was younger, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing what football does for people and that, like, yeah, because you, as I said, you're moving around a lot, but uh, I guess it's, a, it, it, as a young kid, like, that's just, it's it's unsettling, but right, like, it's just that kind of constant motion like I'm I'm here one moment I'm here the next you can never really get a grounding so I can't imagine what that's like but um where, where did you reckon you first you know felt like you settled and found like went home like where you felt like you were settled somewhere um I think every time I just felt settled on I just every place oh I love this place I want to live here then all of a sudden I'm moving um oh, I'm, oh, I can't move and we'll go again we'll try again kind of thing I think I didn't feel too settled properly I think I moved to the Northern Beaches when I was about 15 when I first signed with Manly and it wasn't for like another two years there where I felt like and still feel like Northern normal, normal Beaches is pretty much my home base now. It feels like uh, I've spent the most time there. I lived there the longest. I know all my friends from there, um, all my networks and stuff are that like based down Northern Beaches way. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my home I think for me. It feels that way. Yeah, so well, after after like the tennis coach and you're obviously still young, like um, – like who else have you had to kind of live with jumping around all these places? Has it always been with your dad or is it? Um, uh, it was my dad and then like the yeah, tennis coach and then I moved back in with my dad when I was about yeah 15 or just turning 16, moving on the Northern Beaches. Then I ended up, I think when I was 18, I got kicked out of home. Just, you know, the typical 18-year-old always getting in a bit of trouble here and there. And uh, I think I got my dad in a bit of trouble at the place we were living in. So I ended up getting punted from home and I've been out of home since. That's that doesn't sound like you at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what were you? What are you doing? Just oh man, oh, you know, going out and then coming back to the apartment, making too much noise, and no, nah, maybe even knocking on other people's doors and leaving mess. I don't know. We were just little rats hanging out, you know, having fun, but you know, with no, with no um, regard for anyone else, pretty much. And then yeah, it cost me, it cost me my house. I had to go move in with a mate. Yeah, at eighteen. So the old man's just going nuts. No get out yeah you know. just go nah I had enough so um I thought he was cheating up I remember coming home one time on a Sunday and all my bags were outside packed to the door and I remember I don't know how old I was I might have been might have been 18 18 or 19 and then I started living with a mate from there like oh I was man, I, was, I can't even remember it's so poor it's so blurry um yeah I moved in with a mate anyway and he was sort of I lived with him for a couple of years and then I went to, I remember coming back from Europe, right, when I was about 20. I just finished my last year, 20s. And I come back from Europe and I, I can't remember, I had a big blow up with the mate I was living with and I come back and I think I spent all my money in Europe and I was training full time, my first year full time at Manly and I was homeless for the first three months because of the situation there and I couldn't go back to my dad's, my dad's house and I was sleeping on mate's couches for about three months, my first year full time training. Wow, that's, yeah, that's, that's crazy because people think like, you know, first grade footballer, like... Yeah. You're killing it. You you know you're rolling in cash. You know some people think that you know, yeah. but you yeah. What was that like? Kind of just bouncing around like that. And I mean, you know, you've kind of obviously moved around a lot in your life, so it's not that foreign. But yeah, like, it wasn't too foreign. It was just a bit weird. You know, you go to training. You know, everything's sweet, and you and you're trying to make your best mark, and then you feel like you're leaving tra- training. And you, you know, you're going back to your mate's place, and I'm more very. I was heaps grateful for the. Um, the kindness to just like you know sleep in my space that kind of stuff but it was just a really weird time in my life i felt like you know i was trying to make it you know as a football player but i didn't have a house it was really strange like i said hopping couches yeah because how difficult is that because you know obviously football requires so much dedication it requires so much kind of like you know doing the right things eating the right food being you know really prepared and yeah stuff. exactly but you're you know you're sleeping on couches yeah mate I can't honestly just sort of remember that then like, I don't remember what I was doing at the time but no uh, obviously it was a very strange time in my life but yeah it was pretty intense yeah like I, I can't imagine I, I don't even know that like yeah like yeah, yeah. is it just is that something you you say you just you just remembered it yeah like. I honestly forgot all about that until we just started talking and then I was like oh yeah I remember I got back and then I was I was homeless for a bit just sort of spent on me cash and forgot and then 
didn't have that um that support base as like a family base in northern beaches kind of stuff so i, just, oh, I had to save my mate's couch just to save up and that's for a deposit and get my own place and move in there kind of stuff yeah i mean see how see that's something like a lot of people don't have to kind of deal with is you know at 18 or 19 they've kind of got that support base and that and you're just a young man yeah. trying to kind of get on your feet that you don't have that support base and you know as you said you've spent your money and you're probably not the most responsible person. Nah, at, definitely at not. Time. I thought I'd come back just thinking oh, I'll be fine. And then I was obviously it all hit me at once. So I was like, I literally um, don't have a house to live in again. I had to call, I'd like to call mates up. It was it was pretty like embarrassing at the time. Um, I was just lucky enough to have some good friends around me that um, obviously they were living at home as well. So their parents had to be okay with it. Like, and um, it just sort of worked. I spent two weeks somewhere, another three weeks at another mate's house, and like six weeks at my best mate's place. I think another, another two weeks stint somewhere, then I finally had like all my money, all my things and sorted, had my ducks in a row and I got my own place and, and ever since then it sort of worked out. There's a lot of people that have kind of, you know, yeah, you said helped you out over the years, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. Know, a lot of people that have... Yeah, because like I said, I never had that family base um, around me or the network kind of thing. So yeah, all my friends always, if I ever needed anything, it was my friends, not before my family. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's uh, and so like a testament to you know people you know yeah hundred percent who do the right thing and, and care for people and take people in and that and yeah yeah but like um you know you, you mentioned your mum before and and obviously she passed away when you were young but like growing up without your mum you know obviously a lot of people have their mum and they have their, that support now like what's been your experience you know the, going going through life like that you know losing your mum so young um. That's a hard one because obviously I I wouldn't know what it's like. Like my only, my way is the only way I know. So um, I think it was it was always it was always tough in family situations. Uh, like yeah, young when it, when it was sort of fresh, six, seven, or eight, I'd be at friends' houses. I think you know just the presence of someone else, mum. There, I think I just couldn't handle it. I didn't. I sort of don't remember a lot of my childhood. Like I said before, I had patches when I remember here and here, but my timeline's all a bit um, disorientated. Um, so yeah, I honestly don't know. The difference between you know obviously that kind of stuff so it was, I was obviously really tough took a lot of toll on me but I can't really tell at the moment yeah do hasn't you, really registered yeah do you think it like do you think about that kind of like critically do you think about how you you don't really notice those things or? Uh, I think I could spend I think I must have spent like a lot of time when I was younger I was I was pretty obviously angry about all of it I was you know getting a lot of trouble maybe I was uh, maybe acting out or whatever um, I did get in a lot of trouble when I was younger it took me a lot of time to you know maybe um transfer that anger and realize that it's you know it's already everything's happened and and i can't do anything about it so if i'm going to keep you know just doing things to act out and, and to make people like if, if you know am i am i trying to make people feel sorry for me or whatever it took me a long time to sort of realize why i was acting the way i was acting or what i was doing and um maybe it took me even longer than i thought to you know get past certain things in my life yeah, because that's what James said. He said that anger, like it's yeah. like something you you just feel, and you you're like, oh, you know, why why do I have to deal through with this shit? You know, when you yeah. when you're young, like you know, a lot of people have to deal with things in their life, but I feel like it's doubly hard when you're just a kid, you know, and you don't fucking you don't know yeah, why. No, obviously, you don't know why you're so angry. You're always in trouble, and you sort of just like fuck the world kind of thing, and you don't know why or what's happening, and it just sort of, it come, becomes on repeat, it becomes a habit. Yeah. It, like you. You mentioned those behavioural issues, like, is that just from, yeah, you said, like, not not really having that discipline, like, you know, having people to tell you, Liam, don't do that. Yeah. Don't, like don't, said, be, don't do that, you know? Yeah, I, I, can't, I obviously live with my dad and that. I think we were never that close when I was younger. Um, like, I never had that, that, that's that direct role model telling me, like you said, like, oh, I probably shouldn't do this or watching people do that because um, even when I was living uh, with my dad or that, I was sort of, I was never at home enough to... I don't think um, I don't know how to, 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 to say what I'm trying to say. Never had that um, that direct, you know, perfect relationship where I was. I think because of the you know how everything worked out, I just I was always out and about trying to get out of the house, get away from any issue I could. So um, yeah, we never had the best relationship. So I never had that like that role model, like I said to. Um, you know, yeah, should or shouldn't do this. I sort of just did what I wanted to do, and it, and it, and it seemed to semi work for me, kind of thing. But obviously. Um, when I started playing a bit more footy at a higher level, I got into a lot more trouble yeah. when um, when people are sort of looking at you a bit more. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Because like guys like you and James, and, that, and there's lots of people that have 
you know, have had issues like you had in your life and they haven't had that kind of someone to tell them what to do and that, you know, the older you get, you more, you just, you know, keep doing what you know, right? And, but when you're a first grade footballer, it has a lot more kind of scrutiny on it, doesn't it? And, yeah, and exactly. you're like, you know, no one cares what some bloke in Western City does on his weekend, nah. but if you do it, you know, it's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. And it was in before that, I was, um, when I was at Manly in the lower grades, things that people never even found out about. Um, like that mainly sort of obviously caught wind of because I was on the northern beaches. It wasn't massive things. Um, and I wouldn't, wouldn't even say what, the, what, happened, what I was doing, but it was just a lot of little things that built into little, you know, the snowball effect that mainly started worrying, that they saw some worrying trends. Um, and they sort of gave me an ultimatum that if I don't like either tear counselor, sort out some issues or we just tear contract up. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I, that's the ultimatum I had at 18 already um, yeah at 18 years old they had no one and i just obviously no one knew and i was like well obviously i might just take that option where i keep my contract and i'll sort <laughs> some shit out yeah. and um so, yeah, after that i had a couple of good years and then um obviously after my year of 20s i had that big drink driving thing that come crashing back down and and spent me sent me in a bit of a spiral as well yeah okay look since you brought it up that 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 incident obviously you know high range drink driving obviously is not something you ever want to you know do and it's it's obviously can be very dangerous mm. um that incident is kind of infamous yeah. you know people a lot of people know about it what's your kind of recollection of it you know how you see it in, in your mind uh yeah that was a strange time even a couple of years back it just seems like so long ago almost a different person all those kind of things that i was getting up to and i don't know if it was a i can't even remember the mindset we went for a couple of beers at a pub and on a tuesday the day off the next day and then obviously just got out of hand. I'm not sure if it was a self sabotage thing. St- things started going all right for me. So deep down, I was just, you know, had a few too many beers and thought I was too cool and trying to impress people. Oh, I'll drive drunk and oh, whatever. I don't know what it was. I honestly have no idea. But um, what followed after that was probably uh, probably one of the toughest uh, 18 months or two years mentally for me. I just sort of fell out of love of footy based on my own actions that sort of caused me not to be able to play. Uh, made my debut and then broke my foot in the first 30 seconds that same year so it was just the most up and down year after everything that happened I finally got my break and then I broke my foot so and then yeah like I said I just didn't like footy anymore after that it was a weird and I just signed with the Roosters so I should have been the happiest I'd been like I signed a three-year deal and but deep down I, just, I wasn't happy I don't know I don't know what it was uh, I guess yeah I oh, said a lot, a lot going on um do you remember like and I'll get into like the footy and, and you're breaking your foot and then in the next couple of years but like, do you remember the immediate aftermath of like when when you like wake up the next day and you go, oh shit, like I st- I've stuffed up here big time. And- yeah, I remember waking up the next day. I thought it was a big bad dream. I woke up with a massive headache, and I woke up about ten thirty in the morning, late for training. We had a recovery day at like ten, and I had all these missed calls and and all that kind of stuff. So obviously, it started sinking in that it was real because I was, to be honest, I can't really remember the whole night, like the whole drink driving thing. The only thing I remember is being pulled over. That's um, like a much as a mess I was, but uh, even that seemed like a big dream when I woke up. Then obviously I had to go into training and, and meet the, and see um, Trent Barrett was a coach and Bob Fulton and all the the hierarchy at Manly waiting in a room. Probably the most nervous I've ever been in my whole life, like footy wise. Obviously I was like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm sacked for sure. I had a big chat and I was like, oh, well, I'm going to leave here. I'm going to go home and I'm going to be sacked, kind of thing. Um, but it, yeah, it just it was just a massive blur those couple of days. Yeah, how much? Like, well, now looking back on it, like, um, how much do you like? And obviously, you're you're making your career now, and you're playing for footy, and you're you're living up to your potential. But how much do you not want that moment? Is it is it about you know you don't want Liam Knight to be remembered for that moment because people know you for that reason. They obviously know you as a footballer now, but like you're erasing that with your football. And how much does that kind of play in your head? Yeah, I think it's never something I'll ever make excuses for or try and hide. Um, it's uh, that that experience or that that massive slip up for me happened. I'm sort of I'm grateful that it happened and I come out of it unscathed in a way, if you were like, and obviously not hurting anyone in in a, in a place where it could have been a very obviously a lot worse. Um, but um, if I'm not, it's hard to be grateful for that. Like I said, but I made so many mistakes. And that was probably the biggest one. And I still had an opportunity to still play football. So then that's when I sort of started sinking in that like, I've just got to, I've got to be a better person. I've got to, I've got to make better decisions. And 
And, I, and like I said, I'm, I'm so grateful that I still had opportunity to play football. Like obviously a lot of people would be in my position that that kind of thing happened to them and they'd just be erased or they'd just you know, fall out the other way and go somewhere else. But I was lucky enough to still be in a system and, and still play footy and, and obviously opportunity to um, build myself back up. People always talk about the – obviously the the part of it is the, the error guard situation where you sprayed error guard in your mouth and, you know. But do you do you even remember that? Do you remember why or like – and I know people like trivialise it and they, and they probably shouldn't because, you know, it's drink driving and stuff. Yeah. But do you remember why? Is it like – does it register for you? I, honestly, I still have no recollection of the error guard thing. I, I could have just made it up. <laughs> I could have made it up. It could have just been one of those things. <laughs> could have been a stitch up. But yeah, honestly, I not. did wake up the next morning with a bad taste in my mouth. So maybe it was uh, – spot on who yeah. knows but yeah it was one of those things it's just one of those stories that kind of like <laughs> yeah, and just, like yeah, as you exactly. said like it, you're very lucky that things went the way they were nothing bad happened and now yeah. people kind of make light of it but yeah yeah as said as you said it could have could have gone much worse for you talked about before that following that that two-year period then you break your foot and i remember i went to your debut it was on, it was on the gold coast wasn't it yeah it was on the gold coast yeah and you made your debut and then you broke your foot and then what, you, you didn't you didn't play Nah, so again. there was like five games left of the season yeah. or something like that. So I missed the, missed the season and, and then I um I got, yeah, you know, I offered a three-year deal at the Roosters and I, and I signed that. But then that's when, um yeah, I wasn't in the best place when I signed that deal and obviously it didn't last too long at the Chooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, um, you, you, we were talking about this the other day, but um. You know, when you when you say like you're not in that good place, so you've obviously come off the back of what's happened at Manly, you've injured, so what you just you're not loving football because what in what particular reason? Why? Um, I think it was a it was a probably a list of a few things where the start of the year was drink driving, and I obviously I thought my everything was over, but I had another chance, and I and I worked really hard all year, and I, and I went back and played reserve grade, and uh, trained really hard, and I got my opportunity. And I felt like far out, you know, obviously I've, I've, I've done my, I've made my mistakes, but this is it, this is my chance and this is my chance to show people that I, you know, that I can play football and, and then they've obviously given me a chance for a reason. I didn't waste that chance. Uh, and then I had to go out there and then the first 30 seconds, you know, making my first tackle, I think it was, my foot got caught in a bit of, in a bit of grass in, in Skilled Stadium and my, I could just felt my foot crack and I did the same injury in pre-season, so I knew it straight away. And every, and and then obviously oh, I don't know it was just one of the toughest things I've had to deal with. I got off the like obviously the game off. We lost the game and I played you know sixteen minutes on on the one leg. Sort of I didn't really I didn't come off. I didn't really play. I was on the field. I was just a passenger. Just to, to subs wouldn't sort of ruin our, ruin our substitute thing. I got to half time. Obviously got taken off and went back to my room that night. I think Tom with my roommate actually. Big terms, and I mean, I just like just broke down in tears, and he was just like, hug, you know, hugging me, consoling me. I was just, and from then, you know, um, I'd, I'd signed my deal, so it just felt like I don't know, six years at Manly, it felt like that was my family kind of thing. And then I was leaving. I want obviously, I chose to leave, so it was all my choice. But when it all happened, it sunk in so much differently to what it was like. It wasn't, you know, I was, but I signed this three year deal with one of the greatest clubs in, in the, you know, kind of thing. I should have been on top of the world, but I just, I don't know, it wasn't. And um, that's when I started just, you know, I didn't put football first. And I, I maybe I got, I, I thought I was killing it because I had this deal when I was, you know, 21, signed with the Roosters for three years. And, um, you know, in my head, I go, oh, this is what's going to happen. I'm just going to keep projecting and I'm going to kill it. So I'm just going to go and do whatever I want on weekends and come to training and do the same thing. And that's when obviously I got a little, bit more trouble every weekend, you know, little things here and there. And I wasn't playing well, I was injured. And then, you know, seven months in, I got, I got punted into my three year contract. Just going back to that night with Tom, was that, yeah, this is just a build-up of everything, like in, in terms of everything that had happened in that kind of three months and you're just like, oh, fuck, you know, it's yeah. just nothing's, nothing's going right just, for me. Yeah, I'd also, I didn't even, I wasn't even that, I was just, just disappointed. I got back to my room and I just think I looked Tom in the eye and I just burst out into tears and it was, um, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a tough night, that one, honestly. Um, one of the toughest nights I've had after that, obviously, that couple of months and it all just sort of got to me and, and I just couldn't hold it in. Yeah, and you and Tom, are, you're close, obviously. Like, yeah, 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 yeah good mates. Guys, yeah, you guys played, you know, had the SG ball twenties. Obviously, Tom started killing it really early, um, <laughs> as he did. Um, and then, yeah, so it all sort of. And I was playing, you know, with Tom and Jake and all that, a couple of other mates in the team. And I, I honestly, I played juniors at Manly. It was just the, it was supposed to be the best night of my life, and and ended up being, you know, up there with one of the worst. How much of a, a rock is kind of like I guess guys like Tom, especially because he's, you know, in terms of 
life and childhood probably the exact opposite to you, right? Like he's had, you know, this beautiful upbringing from this great family and they're yeah, really 100%. solid guys, you know, and, and they're kind of there for you who you, you haven't had that. How much have they kind of been there for you over the years? Yeah, um, it's been massive. Obviously, the whole family, um, especially the dad and, and mum and dad, they're just obviously just amazing people. Um, if anyone knows the Jaboyviks, they're um, they're like they're, 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 they're that family. Like, oh, you know, the Jaboyviks are just awesome. You know, the nicest people ever. To just the little things like that, you know, the dad's always, mate, just come around for dinner. What are you doing tonight? Just come over, kind of thing. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. It was just always nice to have that like little support, you know, and um, always there just to have a chat. So it was awesome for me, yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, because yeah, as as we talked about before, like you know those those people that have kind of looked after you over the years, you know, yeah, and it must be you know really uplifting thing to have. But um, so we were talking about this the other day, and then you obviously ended up at the Roosters, but you know you weren't. <laughs> I was you, at the Roosters. I was never at the Roosters. Yeah. yeah, I was just you know I was there making wasting space. Um, yeah, wasn't playing well, wasn't training well, wasn't you know I wasn't. I don't think I was a good person when I was at the Roosters. I just took things for granted and thought I was, you know, a lot better than what I was and sort of, um, yeah, um, got way too far ahead of myself and, and 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 lost track of all the important things, you know, hard work and, you know, all the sacrifices that you have to make to become to be a footy player. Yeah, so we we talked about this uh, for a story on Nine News the other night, but uh, um, so when, when, the, when does it click for you? When's that conversation in your own head you're telling me about that you go, you know, you obviously went to you went to the Raiders, and you know that was probably a bit up and down as well because it was away from Sydney and away from people he knew. But look, when does that? Now you're at South. When did that conversation click? Just like I've only got a short amount of time here, and I've got a lot of talent. I've got to make this work. Yeah, when I um, oh, I think it all started clicking. I had a meeting with Robbo, and at this stage, I didn't think anything was obviously. I, I knew I wasn't playing good footy, and I knew that Robbo wasn't happy with me. And obviously, um, I went into his office to sort of have a chat. Didn't think it was that bad. Like, obviously, I'd maybe naive as well to think that, you know, maybe I'm still killing it here. I'm not going great, but I'm all right. And then I went into his office and long story short, he, t- he said to my face, there's no future for you to play first grade in, at this club in the next any in the next near future. I just, I don't trust you. That's what he said to my face. And I was just like, and that was, you know, that was what, uh, it was like, you know, someone, a coach like that um, saying something like that to you. Uh, it obviously, it sends a few things at the flagpole, like um, yeah, a lot of mixed emotions. Like, fuck this guy, nah, doesn't, no, nah, he doesn't know shit, kind of thing. Yeah, like, you kind of go, you go. And at the time, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm out of here, fuck this club, and then you know, on to the next kind of thing. And then it wasn't for like a, it all started sinking in, you know, two or three weeks time when I was moving to Canberra and I got to Canberra and I had a chat to Ricky Stewart and I was sitting at home by myself in an apartment in Canberra and then. Um, all alone no mates in Canberra thinking like what have I done how have I not like not putting shit on Canberra or anything like that but like how am I how am I here yeah in the, yeah, in the yeah, stage yeah. like where you know a year ago I was you know I signed this deal I was three years at a club that you know one of the most successful yeah, clubs the, in history the glamour club yeah yeah um with all my mates still around and in my comfort zone and all of a sudden I'm in Canberra where I know no one and it, it was a Miller winter kind of thing I'm going what what happened like what <laughs> and then that's what <laughs> um I had a heart to heart with um, a manager and Ricky Stewart, different times, and it all sort of just. I just this is the last chance I have, you know. I got to. But then you start realizing, you start thinking, oh, that conversation I had with Robbo, he's right. Like, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So that hit me. I'm like, fuck, maybe he had a point. Yeah. And um, and that's obviously uh, the only person that's going to do anything for me is me at the moment. So, um, yeah, I just I don't know how to how to describe it, but it was a it was about a year a year mindset a mind a mindset change in Canberra. Um, that set me up for the, the last couple of years. And then you, you obviously, you play at Canberra, but now you, you get the chance to come back to Sydney at, at the Rabbitohs where you, where you want to be and where you feel like you know the most people and you, your life's more settled. But people always talk about Wayne Bennett and James spoke about Wayne Bennett, um, you know, when we did our podcast and just the kind of impact he had on his life. But just the way you, um, James told a story about the way Wayne Bennett first introduced himself and he was like, oh, you know, tell me about yourself and James starts telling him about his football career and he goes, I don't care about your football, mate. I know you can play football. That's why we're here. He goes, tell me about you, your per- your life, your struggles. Was he like that for you? Did he? Yeah, um, I remember it was one of the first chats I had with Wayne and then we're talking about, you know, getting together and having a chat in person and I think I, on the phone he's just like, um, you know, to be honest, I don't really give a fuck about your past yet. I know 
you know, everyone's going to tell me a certain thing about something you've done. I couldn't care less. I'm going to, I'm going to meet you in person and we're going to go from there on, on a, on a blank slate. And then we're going to, and then we're going to figure out who you are because I don't care what you've done or what you've done to someone else. I'm going to just suffer myself and everything else is just white noise. And ever since then, I just, you know, I felt like that kind of, not in debt to, um, not indebted, but I just felt like I had that connection from, from day one kind of thing. I could just be up front. I could, you know, be myself. And, and that was the biggest thing about Wayne. He said, you know, I don't want, I don't want people here trying to be someone else or some trying to be something that not. You come here, you, you're authentic, you be yourself. And that's what, you know, that's why people were drawn to certain teammates. And, and you know, all I want is people who want to be themselves. So that's yeah, and like I guess after all these years of kind of I guess people judging you and informing decisions about what they've heard about you, what they've seen in the papers, for then someone a coach to go, oh, look, you know, I don't, I don't care, I don't care about any of it. Like that must be really like kind of refreshing to hear. Yeah, especially and especially someone like you know Wayne. Um, over the years, he's, he's, there's not, not many people. There's probably no one in rugby league who doesn't know who he is, obviously. Um, and just for someone like that to just to be so upfront and, and open and just mate, just just be, you know, just be you. And um, that was just so big for me. Um, and it was an easy transition, like the, the easiest transition I could have had, especially with all the boys, uh, the playing group, all the staff coaching. It was, on a, it was crazy. Like in a week, I felt like I'd been there for like six months. It just felt like one of those clubs you just, you know, I just slotted straight into and um, I've loved every second of it since. So where's Liam Knight at now? Kind of, you know, you talked about struggling, like with, you know, mentally how you've filled over the years and all the kind of ups and downs. You know, where are you at now with just your, your life outside of football? My um, life outside of football at the moment, uh, I'm in a pretty good place, man. I, I love it. I'm back in Sydney. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've found, my, found my feet a little bit at South. Obviously, um, I had a, a, a probably the, you know, the best football year easily to date last year and made a prelim. Um, started this year, you know, in the 13 couldn't be happier kind of thing and then it obviously came crashing down when the the corona hit but um mate honestly head wise head space wise uh i've never been happier i've still got a, i've got a great bunch of mates at the club and um yeah i can't wait to go back and play footy do you like do you, you know guys always talk about you know they they talk about their stuff and they've probably come more open look at you sitting here talking about it with me you know mm. so you know is that is that something you found over the years you know you said Manly wanted you to see a counsellor and stuff, like talking about this stuff and becoming more open with maybe people at the club or counsellors, you know, has, has helped you? Yeah, it's just obviously gain, gaining that trust for, you know, a certain person or people. I, I definitely wouldn't have been open to talking you know, a couple of years back about anything in my life. Um, I feel like you just open up, let people in your life and it just feels, you know, better to have someone in your life you can talk to or a couple of people, you know, you just have that, that comfort and, and that trust in someone else that, you know, you can have a chat and there's no strings attached and you just move on and that's it. It's awesome. Because that's the thing. It's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a trust thing, eh? There's so many guys that, that don't uh, necessarily, you know, trust. Like they don't, you know, they don't, because they've, they've never had any reason to trust, eh? Like they don't, they've, there's just been people that have kind of, you know, kind of discarded them or screwed them around through, through the years or kind of left and, you know, so you don't have that trust. It's it's a hard thing to build, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. I struggled um, coming up when I was growing up and that kind of stuff, trying to, you know, trust a lot of people in my life, uh, just the way everything worked out. Uh, yeah, it took me a long time to, you know, build that up. Yeah, but, you, you know, getting there now and you're playing good footy, bro, and it's good to see and, you know, we... I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Like I know you're going to grab a behind the line eventually. Like, you're going to go the line. And you're going to put in. A Honestly, kick. I'm just oh, waiting oh. for my kicking license. I'm you're trying like, to put in a few nice ones at training yeah. so the coach gets it. That was all right, you know. Just try and get the, you know, one times. So if I do it, then I can just come to training. And I can just, you know, bring it up. And it's going to be awesome one day. Because Jakey, because Jakey was saying last week when uh, there was a game for Manly where they put him in the halves, like for. A, like three minutes, he said, because yeah. someone went down and he was just, they go, Jake, you're in the halves. And he was so excited. He was like, but he goes, we defended the whole three minutes. And then they just put me back to lock and I just, I never got the chance to kick or, you know, do it. And I'm like, and that's how he came on to you. I'm like, oh, there's one bloke in the NRL that wants his, the seven on his back. <laughs> oh, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm in the wings waiting for, you know, obviously don't want Cody or Renee going down at all. I want them, you know, healthy and fit, but God forbid in the game, if any of them, you know, tweak their ankle or something, I'm more than capable of uh, chucking on the six and, and doing a job for the boys so there you go I'm sure Wayne Bennett listens to the podcast I'm yeah Wayne I'll be on it for sure he knows he knows uh, Liam's you're ready to go um, we have finished off with some uh, fun questions bro we like to do all the time just give me your first answer that comes to your head and uh, we'll see what we can come up with um, what is your who's your who's your celebrity crush 
man or woman? <laughs> Tom said the same thing. <laughs> Tom goes, oh, I've got a, I've got a few blokes in my life. Oh, I, guess <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Like. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, give me, give me, give me female first, and then we'll figure out the blood. <laughs> I don't know if that's a weird question. <laughs> female celebrity crush, far out. I don't even know. Emrata. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the the like, model. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, yeah, I, yeah. I can't go past that. She's yeah. She's sculpted by angels, but yeah. Um, okay, male male crushes. <laughs> <laughs> Jake. Jake Turbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyone who's listened to our last podcast, all they go is they say to me, oh. That Jake, like people that don't know him, though. Like, such a nice guy, yeah. Such what a, a nice what guy. a lovely guy, what a lovely man, like, what yeah. a lovely man. Like he just seems so sweet, and I'm like, yeah, but he's a meat axe. Yeah, he's a meat axe, and he'll yeah. cut you in half. Yeah, yeah, I went around straight at him. What about um? Oh, what are the? I'm gonna tell you a little story about Jake. Okay, remember, yeah, all right. Little, well, that's this, what we're this, here this for. This is a Jake story, right? I remember I was playing for Canberra. I was off the bench against Manly. It was one of my first games for Canberra, <laughs> and like. I think I just got on uh, first half, my first stint, and it was like 35 minutes in. So Jake's been on for the whole half. Obviously, he doesn't go off. And he was on the kick chase line, and, and he jogged past me, and he even had the time and the, and the you know the effort to go, Fuck, good work, Nighty, mate. You're playing really well. And then just ro- and ran back into his own line. I was like, what happened? See, like, I know, mate. He's just like, tell me I'm going shit. Like, find me. I was, yeah. like, but I was like, I couldn't. I didn't know what to say. I was like, "Thanks, man." Like, thanks. thanks. And he just ran off, and I was like, "Fire out!" It was just mixed emotions. Is what I mean. It, yeah. like, we asked him about this on the podcast last week. I said, "There's rumors about you for years that you used to apologize to kids when you tackled them too hard." And he goes, "Nah, mate, it's a jr." True, true story. I never did that. He did. I played junior for like a club footy against him, and that used to belt people, get up and go, "Oh, sorry, man, you're right." And then run off from Arca. Like, it's just, it's so funny. But this is, this is what I mean. He's, he's, he's even that good a bloke that he's talking down stories about how good a bloke he is. He's like, yeah. nah, I didn't do that. I didn't yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm an asshole. I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and, he, and, he, and he, in, a, in a game, he runs past and goes, oh, good on you, bro. Like, you go, well, well, keep it up, keep it up. And then ran off. I'm like, <laughs> shut up, Jake. What a champion. What <laughs> that a was champion. the funniest. Whereas, like, the old days, blokes would come in and just eye gouge or like, yeah, 100%. Like, you muppet, take muppet, your, yeah, yeah. take your head Scratch, off, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 Scrotum, like, like, squirrel like, grab, play the whole half, almost going, yeah, yeah, you're going well, you're going well, and then walks on and then just runs back into his own line. Oh my god, it's hilarious. See, I'm gonna have to get him back on one day and confront him <laughs> with this because he goes, nah, they're telling you they're g'ing up, and he also tried to deny he's a smoke bomb. Like he'll disappear. Oh, the smoke bomb, especially. He's gotten a bit better. He, he, he does love a beer. Yeah, loves a beer a bit more now. But I remember. When he, you know, 21, 22, 23, even we, oh, he was 22, 23, I was 20, 21 at Manly. And he was a specialty. Like he just, it just literally, you can see him with his, his, his high beams on and he's just almost moonwalking out of wherever we are. <laughs> And then I, I remember calling him one time. He's like, shush. She's like, Jay, Jay, Jay. He's dead set run out this door. But looks like to Tom. Looks yeah. like Tommy that quick. Yeah, he's running yeah. faster than Tom for the first time ever <laughs> just to get home. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, do, you have a, do you have a player you hate playing against most? Um, we hate Connor coming up against. I don't really. Eh? I don't hate playing against anyone. Even guys that like, oh, you hate tackling, or you're like, oh, just please don't run at me, just, just, <laughs> <laughs> or, like, or please don't hit me. <laughs> no, it feels boring, but uh, honestly, I don't have a, I, I sort of don't have a person I hate playing against, or I don't, I probably, yeah, well, I'm not, run, I'm not running at Jake. No, I'm not yeah, running yeah, at Jake. yeah, but you don't fear anyone, mate. You're, no, 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 you're, you're tough. Um, Purely because he's probably going to spray me if he gets me, and he'll probably get me. So, <laughs> um. What do you reckon plans for after football? You probably don't think about this yet, but what, what, what would the ideal life of Liam Knight look like after footy? Well, I've been thinking about that a bit. Obviously, you know, we're not playing footy forever. I don't want to – you try not to put too much thought into it, but, you know, you're not naive, naive enough to think you're going to finish footy and just walk into one of these jobs that, you know, all the, all the freaks just walk into commentary and that kind of stuff. So I can't give you a definitive answer. I'm not sure. I'm still figuring that out. Um Oh, I like real estate. I'm interested in the real estate game and that kind of stuff. But honestly, until I need to start studying some course, looking at some finance course at the moment. Uh, but after football, I honestly I have no idea at the moment. Mate, you could be you could be in media. I reckon. Just give you oh, a I, I, give you a late show. Give you. Yeah, it's gonna be honestly, if anyone wants to give me a start, I'm there. I'd love I'd love to be in the media. I love a, I love talking shit uh, and, I, and I like the atmosphere around it all. But I, other than that, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. I think up late with Liam Knight, I can see it. <laughs> up give very you, late. Give you a, give you an R rating <laughs> yeah. and just at one thirty in the morning show. Then I watch it. I was calling a job. Yeah, but you know, your tax write offs. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, mate, you're already thinking yeah, money-wise. Yeah, I mean, um, 
Oh, what about the uh, ultimate day off? What are you doing if you're not training and you're you're killing time? Because I know you can't sit still. No, the ultimate day off. Uh, still up early, probably going for an early swim, a little coffee, hitting the coffee scene, um, brekkie. Uh, we have a little recovery joint we go to. Uh, it's called a Cultivate, Cultivate Recovery. Yeah. Currently closed down through the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's me go to. I'm straight on the Normatex in like a little hyperbaric chamber and I'm probably going for three swims throughout the day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and you were saying before uh, before I rocked up, you are surfing, which I find <laughs> amazing considering you, well, you're Godzilla. Well, I was, I, was out, I was out there. I was out there on the board. I'm not sure. I, I think I stood up. Point three of a time or something. Yeah. The waves were, I was getting hammered. And my shoulders were locking up. I never surf. I got no surfing fitness. Honestly, if anyone's watching me, I would have looked like a dead set. Mong. And how thick's the board? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I might bind the board. The board wasn't that thick. I wasn't floating. I'm not very buoyant at the moment. So uh, <laughs> I don't think you ever have been. Yeah, yeah. I need a big, thick thing that's going to really <laughs> put me on a wave for myself. Do it all for me. So you're not, you're not. Um, but yeah, so I have started surfing in, you, in this little um, time of extra time. So in COVID time, you started surfing. Time, yeah, I started I, surfing. I'm I, awful, awful, but I can't see you being the next. Kelly Slater nah, anytime, don't, so, yeah. nah, it's don't just, worry about it. It's yeah. just pure physics, mate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Something exactly. that big doesn't float well, <laughs> no, doesn't yeah. doesn't maneuver well. Hundred percent. Um, what about who's a of all the you know you played a few teams, you play with a few guys. Uh, who's biggest pest living with or rooming with or just just in general? Just in general. Honest, Adam, Adam Reynolds would be the biggest pest Adam for Reynolds. sure. Yeah, and it's um, and it's probably. I did, he'd probably be everyone's pick. I think he just doesn't shut up. And you get one day a month that he'd just come in and he's off because he might have had a bad sleep and that's one of my favourite days of the month. <laughs> and then other than that, he's just so loud and, and it's just anyone, everyone's everyone's a victim. He doesn't 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 pinpoint. He will go after anyone. Well, what does he do? I, honestly, I, can't, I don't even understand what he's saying. He just says random things that doesn't even make sense. And he's laughing at his own jokes and he's trying to you know hide things in your locker or just – just say random little stuff. I don't know. It's maybe a small man syndrome thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Trying to be, trying to finally be dominant for once in his life. I don't know, but he's just, he's, he's just an Yoke absolute he can... pest. He's a chihuahua, like barking in the corner of the locker room all day. Wow, it's hectic. Okay, because that's when he's when he's you know obviously we only see the side of him where he's in front of the cameras and he's. He's professional. He's captain. He's always saying the right things. But one hundred percent not Adam Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is what I'm saying. These guys, they should just strap cameras to you guys. Yeah, go just hide a camera and then you'll see the real side of them all. Reality TV. <laughs> Reality That's, TV. That, that. Oh mate, honestly, it's hectic. If you could go on a reality TV show, which one would you go on? They're all trash, man. Honestly, <laughs> I have to go like Survivor would be the only one that you know you could sort of. It's a bit of politics, you know. You know, trying trying to be a bit sneaky and 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 then manipulate from behind the scenes. I might have a bit of fun doing that, yeah. Other than that, I'm not doing the other ones, the Love Islands and, <laughs> I can and see the, you other, on, the other nonsense. I, I, I can see you on Love Island. Couldn't, no. <laughs> I could I'd see. probably have a bit of fun on Love Island. Yeah, I could see but, you on Love Island. Uh, I don't think I want to go on there. Oh, are you, are you, you can rate yourself as a bachelor as well too. Right? <laughs> no. I know you got a girlfriend now, but you can yeah. rate yourself as a bachelor. I nah, mate, no. Nah. This is <laughs> the survivor of me, I think. Uh, <laughs> Raz, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for, for staying. Uh, sharing you know some of your life man it's obviously you know a lot of people want to hear these things and they and you know see that you know just because you guys are playing professional football doesn't mean you know you haven't had your battles and you know you guys are quite inspirational to a lot of people so thanks for sharing and being a, a the always entertaining uh, person that you are <laughs> no worries mate thanks for having me on appreciate it bro don't no worry Thanks for listening, guys. We've got plenty more episodes coming your way very soon. Don't forget to follow the Refuse to Lose podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Mm -hmm.